The key to staying safe on all risk assignments seems to be a keen sense of situational awareness. You need to be mindful of not only the physical hazards, but the emotional hazards as well. Let's remember, there are a number of resources available to you when you prepare for non-fire assignments. The Lessons Learned Center website can link you to a number of after-action reviews already done by people that have been on these types of incidents. We would encourage you to do as much research as you can before mobilizing to a non-fire assignment. To conclude this module, let's listen to Tom Fry, who has provided disaster assistance all over the world, talk about dealing with the safety aspects and emotional aspects of these assignments. Well, I think there's two issues there, Ted, that I think is probably worth discussing. One is from the safety aspect, I think there's, there's the, the, the physical safety. And again, I think just like in wildland fire, you have to have that situational awareness. You should be looking at the potential issues that are out there. And I think maybe some of the same if you look at aircraft. I mean, the ones that really hurt us over year after year, aircraft, vehicles, uh, uh, just, just the work environment itself. I think there may be some commonalities there, but certainly in this all risk, we are running into these other issues that, are, that we are not familiar with, the, the hazmats that we don't have the training on. Certainly those are the ones, and, and I guess the way I would say is, is if, if I'm throwing into, into a situation like that, I think we have to teach our firefighters to say no when, when they're not prepared or somebody says to them, hey, we think you need to be helping us here and say, that goes beyond my skill level, my, my training, my ability, and I could, uh, you know, saying, hey, I could get hurt doing this because I don't know what I'm doing. And I think, that's it, I think that's something we need to instill in our firefighters, saying you can say no to some of these things. On the emotional side, I think the one thing I've seen and this goes internationally or domestically, uh, that what can happen to a, a person that is, I guess when you think of a fire line, you're, you're not as emotionally involved with a fire line. If, if they give you a piece of ground to, to deal with and the next day you go to a different division, it's, it's not the same, but I mean, it, it's not an issue. But if you go to a, uh, to a hurricane where you're at a distribution center, and maybe you start to meet people, you actually you start to hear about the lives and what's happened, how their lives have been disrupted, you begin to take on an emotional feeling for that family. And then when you're 14 days or 21 days or 30 days or whatever the assignment is, then you're, then you're leaving. You feel like you haven't, there's no closure, that you're, that you're leaving people that are still in need. And that, I think, we need to teach our, our folks, I think, that saying, you know, take, take pride in what you've done. Uh, realize that you've helped people, but also understand that you can't, you may not be there to complete the full cycle. Uh, when these folks, you know, to be there to get these folks back on their feet. And I think that's a, a key thing to let them know is that you won't be there for closure, but you will have done a very good service to them while you were there. Uh, people always say it must be horrible to see this death, destruction, I mean, bodies, uh, people in absolute destitute poverty, lost everything they have. And yet what I always say is, yeah, it is horrible. But it, I try and concentrate on what I'm there to do, not what I'm seeing. I mean, certainly what I'm seeing does have, it does affect you, and it, maybe it, it strengthens you in a way of saying, I want to work hard to, make, to, to fix this. But I try not to have an emotional attachment to an individual or, or to what I'm seeing in a, a setting. I try to have a, a focusing on what's the job here. And I know that if I do my job, I will have, be able to have an effect on those people and on their situation. You know, as far as knowing when you're at your limit, or, I, I think it's good, and that goes back to some of the things we teach as far as uh, leadership, as far as uh, team cohesion, that ask, your, ask your, your teammates, ask uh, the people you're working with. I mean, or, or when you go into these situations, have a little talk before you go in and say, hey, we know what we're going into. This is different. Let's, let's keep an eye out for each other. And I think sometimes you'll see that. It will show up in other people when they... You can see that they are changing. They're not the same people that you're, you know, you may see on, on the wildland, in the wildland fire situation. That now you're in an all risk situation where they're, they're reacting differently. They're sounding differently. They're um, obviously emotionally they may be different. That's when maybe it's time to call a little timeout, a little team meeting, discuss it. And it could be that maybe somebody's not ready for that, and that maybe they should remove themselves from that, that situation.